Hello all, my name is Ben Heinley. I'm a project geologist here at Sequent. In the next five minutes, I'll be showing you how to import well screens as an interval table. So now we are in leapfrog. First thing I'm going to do is import my boreholes. I'm over here. Going to right click on the borehole data. Solder. Going to import boreholes. This will bring up a prompt asking me what I want to bring in. Going to look for those files. Going to bring in my caller data. Because my geology interval data is named appropriately, it will automatically bring that in, but I also want to bring in my well screens to the intervals. So I will press the plus sign. Going to double click on well screens, and I'm going to hit import. Because most of the columns are named appropriately, such as X, Y, Z, max depth, I'm going to ne hit next through the color data. The same with the geology data, I will hit next through there. I'm going to spend a minute talking about the data import for the screen file. I'm going to make this screen a little bit bigger so we can see everything. So right now we are importing the whole ID, which is going to match up with our color. The screen ID, this is something that you can import. So if a whole ID has more than one screen, which is possible, um, you could import this to show as text with the screen. You'll see what I mean here in a little bit. I'm going to import this as a category. I'm going to skip over the from to. Leapfrog has already identified that. I'm going to move to the screen diameter category. I'm going to import this as a category first. I'm also going to import this as a numeric data type. So now I have a categorical type for the diameter and a numeric type for the diameter. And you'll see why I have twice. When that has finished importing, you'll see up here under boreholes that you have some well screens. There's an error or a warning. I'm going to right click on that and see what that is. Invalid values handling. Um, there's missing intervals for some of my wells, and that's okay because not every interval of my collar needs to have a screen. It shouldn't. Screens don't go down the entire length of a well typically. So I'm going to say these rules have been reviewed and press save. I'm going to exit out of the error editor, and then I'm going to pull in my well screen into the scene. Okay, now we are in the leapfrog scene. You can see some well traces with screens in blue and red. I'm going to just change, first change the color to something more appropriate for a well screen. For my screens with a diameter of one inch, I'll just make that a light gray. For my screens with a diameter of two inches, I'll make that dark gray. And then I'm going to make these two-dimensional lines into three-dimensional cylinders by pressing the Make Line Solid button. You can now see the screens more easily. I'm also going to add the text. So the text right now is calling out if it's a one inch screen in diameter or a two inch diameter screen. I'm also going to turn on the legend, which will show the same information. I'll now move over to the shapes properties panel to make some adjustments here. I'm going to change my uh, cylinder radius to 10, just to make it more appropriately sized to a cylinder, to a screen. I'm going to make the radius values a function of the screen diameter. This is why we imported the screens as a numeric data type and a categorical data type. And I'm going to format the display text to change it from just showing the diameter to changing the well screen ID. I'm going to click on screen ID and just make that a flat color. Press close. And now you can see that in our scene, we have our well screens. Um, their color is a function of their diameter and their size is a function of their diameter. That is why we brought in the data type as categorical and numerical. And then because we brought in the screen IDs as categorical, we can also display those um, next to the screen. So you can easily see wells that have two screens and what those IDs are. 